great. So, um, so I'm talking about uh, HIP 17, uh, which is a proposal that uh, was recently passed on on Snapshot to uh, reduce the number of jurors used in first round uh, disputes on proof of humanity. Uh, so this is a pretty simple, both like conceptually and in terms of execution proposal. So th this shouldn't take very long, but I, you know, feel free if people have questions. Um, the this first slide here just sort of shows the the forum post where I where I discuss this. Uh, I may or may not be legible depending on the size of your screen. Uh, but the idea is that currently in in, uh, in proof of humanity, when somebody challenges a proof of humanity profile, uh, you have it raises a dispute uh, where three Claros jurors um, look at the profile and decide if it meets the standards required under the policies, uh, and then they vote and you know, depending on how they vote, it's accepted or not. Uh, and this, and then there's like a possibility for appeal uh, where if someone objects to the, um, the the ruling of the initial panel of, th of, of three jurors, it can appeal to seven, 15, 31, larger and larger panels of jurors. Uh, and then the way that Claros works, the um, people are incentivized, the jurors are incentivized, and the ultimate ruling is made based on whatever the final appeal verdict is. Uh, so if it appeals up to 31 jurors or whatever, then you um, it's that final panel that matters in terms of determining what happens and also how people are like, how the initial jurors are penalized or rewarded for their votes. Uh, they're penalized if, they're, if they disagree with the final decision, if they're rewarded if they if agree with the final decision. So you as a juror, um, not only look at like what do you think that other people in your own round will vote, but you also think about the possibility of a future appeal uh, and what you know, if, you know, if it eventually is appealed, like how you think some future abstract you know sort of generic juror would vote on this in the future. Uh, so this has consequences in terms of the cost of deposits for for humanity submissions. Can you go to the next slide? Thank you. Uh, so the um, when people submit to proof of humanity, they, they include a deposit, which basically covers two things. One, compensation for these jurors, uh, because um, the uh, jurors are compensated out of the sort of lost deposit of whichever side doesn't ultimately win. Uh, so in proof of humanity, people submit a profile, they include a deposit. And then some, for someone to challenge, they also include a deposit. Uh, and those deposits cover the like cost for what it would cost to pay the jurors uh, for the work that they do reviewing the cases. Uh, and if the submitter wins, uh, he or she gets her deposit back and the like juror costs come out of the challenger's deposit and vice versa if the challenger wins. So if the challenger wins, uh, the submitter's deposit has to be able to cover all of what the um, like the juror's costs are, at least for an initial first round of, of dispute resolution. Uh, and then the, there's a second part of the juror of the submitter deposit, uh, which covers the rewards for the challenger. Uh, if the uh, if like a successful if a challenger successfully realizes, okay, this 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 profile doesn't conform to the standards. It's not clear that this person's a real human. You know, uh, then uh, like the challenger put in work to find that, and they also should be rewarded. Uh, so this this deposit is like part challenger reward, part juror compensation. Uh, and by reducing the number of jurors from three to one in the in the sort of first round of the dispute, you can. Um, uh, I don't see the slides anymore, uh, but you can um, reduce the costs of of how much effort the jurors have to put in and how much they have to be compensated. So the deposit can be decreased. Um, so I'm not sure if other people can still see the slides; they've disappeared from me. Uh, but. Um, <laughs> yeah. So currently, the the current deposit uh, is 0.1 ETH for the challenger reward, and three jurors worth of uh, average juror compensation of 0 0.028 ETH. 0 0.028 ETH. Uh, and uh, by having only a single juror, uh, you can move that to point like the three of the 0.1 ETH for the challenge reward, uh, but then you only need a 0 0.02 ETH in sort of juror compensation uh, so that the total deposit is 0.128. Um, 
And uh, so this, you know, decreases somewhat the total deposit, which makes this more accessible, which is, you know, a goal for this platform. Uh, and also note that the challenger deposit, like, decreases even you know, like more substantially uh, because the, um, like, the challenger deposit is just what you have to pay to pay the jurors. Uh, so it decreases from three times 0 0.028, which is 0 0.084, all the way down to just 0 0.028 because now the challenger is paying a, a large enough deposit to pay for, like, a single juror. Uh, so this proposal uh, doesn't change in and of itself to the 0.1 ETH challenge reward, uh, but if this seems to work well and like the um, you know like we we stick the community sticks with a single juror um, panel to, uh, for first round arbitration, uh, then uh, you could imagine that the challenge reward doesn't have to be quite as big. You know, like some future HIP could move it down too, uh, because from the challenger's perspective, like why are they getting this reward? Well, part of it is for the effort that they're making, looking for things to challenge. And part of it is for the risk that they take on uh, paying this deposit, you know, that they might lose if the jurors disagree with their challenge. Uh, so if their deposit decreases, then maybe their risk decreases a bit and their reward doesn't have to be quite as big. Um, so uh, can you go to the next slide? Yeah, you're already sort of there, consequences on security. Thank you. Uh, so like, why is this, what like, you know, what, what are the trade-offs here and why, why is this sort of like an acceptable thing to do? Uh, so uh, as, I, as I said before, in Claros, we have an appeal system. So even if you only start with a first round juror, you know, in like Claros, it's about being coherent with like an ultimate ruling. Uh, you might ask, okay, like this first round juror, they're, you know, they're, they're by themselves. They're automatically coherent with yourself. Not necessarily, as I sort of explained with this appeal process, you, you know, you, like if there's an appeal, they have to be coherent with some future larger panel. Uh, so that juror, you know, is incentivized to think about how the future panel will, will rule, uh, which means that like there's still an incentive for them to to think about this seriously. Uh, and if um, like then like um, if you think about okay, um, what what's the risk that if I pick like a, a single juror, uh, I will have sort of like a random so by random chance, someone who's just not representative of the, of the sort of broader community viewpoint on this case. Uh, so if the larger juror panel you, you pick, uh, the more likely you are to have something statistically representative of the broader community's point of view on, on a given case. Uh, so, you know, this is like an argument for starting with larger panels when you think that there's a lot of random variation if you're going to pick, because, you know, the, the like the one sample size of one, you know, would just be like completely unrepresentative. So it's almost, it's like not worth doing. Uh, but in cases where you um, have um, a lot of coherence among the community, people tend to rule the same way. There's a very high rate of people uh, ruling correctly. Uh, then that one person may have a good likelihood of being representative of the broader community, uh, just because like there's a lot of agreements. Uh, and it turns out that in proof of humanity cases so far, uh, the rate of coherence in the first rounds is 97%. Uh, in contrast to other Claros cases, uh, where the rates of coherence are closer to like 90%. Uh, it varies a bit from sort of application to application. Uh, but because of this sort of particularly high rate of first round coherence in, in proof of humanity cases, um, it's, you know, if you, if you view the sort of uh, pool of people that are currently writing ruling in first round cases as representative of the kinds of rulings that they'll have on these sort of single juror first round rulings, uh, it's, it's pretty likely, you know, it's not guaranteed, but it's pretty likely that you'll draw someone who's representative of the broader community uh you know like the 97 percent of the time more or less uh so that that's sort of good enough uh that you know in the three percent of the time you know people can appeal people can like community members can realize there's something wrong the person didn't rule correctly and they can appeal and then we're back to a three-round case sort of just like what we're doing what you know what we had currently only like delayed by you know some period of time by like a week for the first round to, to happen uh, but, you know, 97% of the time we've avoided this duplication of effort and we've allowed a reduced to, uh, to submission deposit. Uh, so currently, uh, one other Claros application uses a first round single, single juror, uh, which is Linguo, which is a sort of translation DAP. Uh, but uh, Proof of Humanity gets more traction than, than Linguo, at least currently. Uh, so I personally, at least, am uh, interested in seeing and curious to see how this will work uh on a sort of broader scale that has more cases um like in the long term if you think that claros can sort of compete with uh sort of centralized content moderation and sort of micro cases you know sort of the, like 
on the scale of what like Facebook and Twitter do for their, their review of content moderation. Uh, you want it to be as efficient as possible, uh, which means that you sort of want to have a mechanism where most cases are only looked at by one person. Uh, and then some percentage of the time, yeah, there's an appeal, which in terms of like sort of efficiency and cost of resources is kind of similar to, you know, your centralized moderator at Twitter, you know, like they're going being escalated to their, their boss, they're, you know, reviewing some supervisor reviewing what they've done uh, on some minority of cases. Uh, so, you know, the sort of structure we have here where we start with a single juror and then there's like a possibility for appeal kind of emulates that. Uh, so I, I'm excited to see the sort of, you know, how that works on, on this scale and, you know, if we can obtain that kind of efficiency. Uh, so next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, so this was already voted on. You know, I would have come here and spoke, spoke about this before. If people, you know, if people had time. Apparently this was the first good time slot. Uh, it wasn't super controversial. So, I mean, mostly I'm here to talk about sort of the consequences. You know, people can always propose to undo this, you know, like some future AI, HIP can just like move this parameter back to three. Uh, but uh, like sort of concretely what this process looked like to, to adopt this proposal uh, and sort of what's, what's between us and implementation uh, is that um, there was, of course, like for all HIPs, there was a, a snapshot vote. Uh, it passed overwhelmingly. It looks unanimous there. Uh, and um, the uh, now that that's passed, uh, it because this changes like a parameter in the smart contract and not just like a, a policy, which is sort of part of the community consensus, uh, like the smart contract has to be aware of this change. Uh, the smart contract for humanity has a parameter that tells it how many jurors it asks for when it creates our, when it when it asks for arbitration, uh, and uh, that. You know, that parameter is going to be moved from three to one. How does a smart contract know that? Uh, so last slide. And it's already sort of visible. Uh, so what happens, What like how the, where the, how the governor works for Q3 Vanity, and this is the same as how the governor works for sort of Claros, uh, you um, have a sort of proposal, have, have, a, have, a, have a situation where people have, a, have voted on sort of human language proposals. Uh, like people voted on, okay, move this parameter from, from three to one. Uh, and, uh, you know, like that has to be converted into sort of like a language the smart contract can see and understand. Uh, there's like a transaction that is made uh, by the, the governor of, of, of the humanity smart contract, which is the Claros governor, uh, saying, okay, you know, like update this parameter. Uh, and uh, how this works is people can submit the, um, the like, the the update in smart contract like machine readable form uh and with like a deposit again you know, close frequently they're these sort of deposit challenger games uh and uh if uh, somebody disagrees that this machine readable sort of transaction doesn't correspond to the um so if, if there's a if somebody thinks that that doesn't correspond to what people voted upon they say no 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 this is what people voted on you you've like created some fake transaction that is like you know going to like attack the governor by, by doing something that wasn't agreed upon, uh, that can be challenged. And then there's a case in a, Claro, a specialized Claros court uh, where people vote on whether or not that this actually represents the, um, what people voted on or not. Uh, and if it's either not challenged or if the Claros jurors uphold it as having been what people voted upon, uh, then the contract realized, you know, accepts this machine readable form as being the correct, you know, sort of thing to update uh, and it's implemented. Uh, so currently, the uh, the the HIP has already been voted by the by the community, and it's going through this process of being submitted to the governor. Uh, so there'll be like a challenge period where people can like chip, flag it as being not what people voted upon or not. Uh, and once either it goes to a Claros case or it sort of the challenge period times out, it will be implemented. Okay, so I hope that was clear. Do people have questions on this? Yeah, that was clear. So, um, um, guys, do you have any questions? Um, feel feel free to ask if you I need like everything. clarification. All right. So, uh, anyone else who would like to add something? Okay, so I guess um, 
everything is uh, clear. And so, um, William, would you like to um, add a final note regarding this uh, topic? Um, so I've mostly said what I have to say. I, you know, I'm, I'm like, uh, I'm you know, enthusiastic about this proposal, as I sort of explained uh, about these sort of like seeing what kind of efficiency gains we can have in Claros in general, but also about making proof of humanity this much more accessible by having this, you know, like a reduction in deposits. Uh, so I, I'm enthusiastic about the fact the community adopted this, this proposal. Uh, and uh, thank you for, for coming and listening to the, this call. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much. And I think um, this is really a great um, outcome since um, for a lot of people, when they register, they kind of like they're a bit hesitant because of the amount of deposit that they need to give. But um, it's nice that this proposal was approved and i hope that soon this will be um, implemented because it, it will be very helpful for a lot of people who would like to uh, register in the poh so yeah i guess that's that's it um um so you anyone else would like to ask for a final question I would just like to add uh, thank you to William and all the Proof of Humanity community. Thanks for all your great work. Yes, of course. Uh, thank, thanks, William, for giving us the time to uh, have to attend the community community call and to all also to all the community members who participated on this call. So um, I guess see you on the next community call. And we will be announcing about the next topic for the next community call. So, yeah, um, have a great day, everyone, and see you on the next call. Once again, thank you. Thanks. Cheers.